But the fundamental challenges that we had was we have an international system that is designed on respect for sovereignty of state and non principles of non-interference. And yet we were dealing with conflicts that were increasingly civil wars and internal conflicts, which meant that that international system was limited in how it could engage. And so the question for me was who, who responds? Who, is the first, who are the first people to address the humanitarian crisis, to stand up and try and stop the violence, um, to take action in, in some sort of ways? And it was, as I looked across the room and, and in, the in the dialogues that we would have been having at, um, with my colleagues, it was that women are doing it. And, and they've always been sent central to war and peace. It's just that they've always been taken for granted. And they've always been the invisible forces and voices because we don't think of them as a unit of analysis, either in terms of you know, maybe victimhood, but de definitely not as agents of change. And that was the moment where we said, given how global this is, and given, and as Rita said this, I mean, it, it, the, the reason why this agenda continues to be relevant is because there's a universality of experience 